Always great catching up with my next guest, downtown TJ Brown. He's going to be back in action, taking on Danny Chavez coming up here at UFC 252 next Saturday. Uh, TJ, how's it going, man? Man, it's going great, man. Just uh, in the thick of it with training, you know, so just getting a little rest in between sessions right now and uh, getting ready to head back up there. When did you find out about this fight? Because it's kind of flew under the radar. I know they were adding a lot of fights sort of late to this card. Right. Uh, it was it was a, within a week ago, you know, uh, so sort of short notice. But, man, I've been, I've been uh, hauling at Jason trying to get a fight. You know, I've been kept myself in good shape. I, I, I've kept my weight down with uh, the local meal prep company here. So i have just uh, I've been really jockeying to get a fight. And, man, this came up and I think it's a great fight for me. You were kind of expecting something then, I guess, because like you said, you were bugging your manager. You're like, I got to get back in there. You know, no, COVID or not, I got to go and get this done. 100 percent, man. 100 percent. I know the debut did not go as planned, but you always learn more from a win, uh, from a loss, I should say, than a win. Uh, what did you take away the most from that fight with Jordan Griffin? You know, man, it it, it definitely stings. The loss stings, you know. And uh, I told somebody the other day, I was like, man, it, it sucks uh, that I that I got choked. But you know what? What hurt me most, and what bothers me most, uh, going to bed and sleep, going to bed at night, is is that I didn't open up. I didn't fight my fight. I didn't. I didn't go out there and fight the fight. I wasn't the fighter that got me to the UFC, you know. I, I was fighting kind of a safe type fight, you know. And and this fight, I just want to go out there and open up and fight like fight like the the fighter that I am, and, and go out there and be explosive, let these hands go, and and put on a show for the crowd, and 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 put on a performance that I'm proud of. What do you know about your opponent, a newcomer? Uh, were you familiar with him when they gave you the name, or did you have to look it up? What, what was sort of your first thoughts uh, when you heard about Danny Chavez? You know, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I had been training so much, and I was in a mindset that, that the next time Jason called and gave me an opponent, I was taking it no matter what. And I, I mean that. Like, I, I didn't I didn't look him up. I, I, I took it. Now, of course, my coaches have, have, have went into to finding film on him and studying him, and we think it's a great matchup for me. But, man, I was just in a mindset. I was so ready to fight. I was such in a good place mentally and physically. I, I was just ready to fight, man. Yeah, so it didn't really matter. And you're used to this on the regional scene. You get opponent switch-ups all the time. So it's like uh, you know business as usual, so to speak. So now that you've had a chance to look at him, how do you feel like you match up against him here from a style perspective? You know, I think my experience is going to play a big role in the fight uh, as well as I think I'm a bit better than him standing and on the ground. You know, I'm not going to talk down my opponent because, you know, without him, I wouldn't have a fight, you know. And I'm very thankful that, that we, we both have the opportunity to fight on such a big card, you know. So – uh, but, but I think I'm a little bit better everywhere, and I just want to go out there and be an MMA fighter, open up, and, and, and display my skills. Excellent. Uh, how's training camp been? Have you been limited with the COVID stuff, or how, how's things going as far as that goes? You know, as far as work-wise, you know, uh, you know I'm a coach there at the gym as well, and uh, it's been tough, you know, uh, with, with, with the new standards uh, that, that are set right now. It's, it's tough. Uh, we've had to do a lot of stationary stuff for our classes and things like that. But I've got a, a select few guys uh, that, that have stayed with me through the training camp. And uh, I'm just real lucky to have those guys around. And we've really kept ourselves accountable. And we got a few of those guys here fighting here in the next couple of weeks as well. So uh, we, we've been able to stay in, intact here and, and, and keep our little, not, uh, our little tight group and, and just get things done. Who have you mainly been working with as far as bodies in the gym? You know, of course, Bryce is my, my number one training partner, but I've got a Michael Walker, which fought in uh, one FC. He's down here. Uh, we've been doing a lot of striking with him in MMA. And uh, there's a few wrestlers from the uh, D1 college here at Euler that, that are staying here, uh, including my brother. And, uh, you know, and then just uh, that, that, that's the main ones, you know. I've uh, been working a lot with my Muay Thai coach, Bill Barton, and as well as Roly Delgado on my jiu-jitsu and, of course, Matt with my boxing. Yeah, Roy's such a good coach. He doesn't get enough credit for the work he's done with not only you, but with Bryce as well. I think it's uh, cool to watch him sort of, you know, put his knowledge into you guys because obviously he was a good fighter, but it's cool to just see sort of a passing of the torch, uh, so to speak. 100%, man. He, he was a good fighter, but, man, he's a, he's a great coach, you know, uh, both both strategically with technique, but also mental-wise. You know, he, he helps me a lot with, in the middle game, and uh, it, it's such a blessing to have him, and I might be able to – display some of his leg lock moves uh, in this next fight. Ah, nice. Okay, that's cool. Um, how is the cut going uh, to 145 uh, for this fight? You know, uh, like I said, I was lucky. You know, about two months ago, I started with this new meal prep company, and I've been keeping my weight down in the 60s. So, you know, the, the, this is this cut is actually, although it's short notice, 
Uh, it's actually going to be a bit easier cut than usual because I've, I've, I've been doing a little bit of extra cardio and uh, keeping my – not eating a bunch of junk food like usual. Yeah. What's your favorite meal that you can eat that's part of this like healthy plan? Because everyone's got kind of their go-to that they're just like, you know what? This isn't terrible. I can keep having it. You know, they, they, they make this uh, spaghetti with uh, zucchini noodles. Oh, cool. And uh, man, it's it, it's great tasting, man. I, I don't know what kind of sauce they use, the meat sauce they use, but man, it's delicious. And uh, I, I'm very thankful for those guys. Because that's something I don't think people think of. Is like you, it's one thing to eat healthy, but it, you got to get creative and make it actually taste good. Otherwise, your your brain just kind of like I don't want to eat this, right? So. Man, yeah, I, I you I, you I'm sure you've heard it from several fighters, but it's so true. You get tired of eating such a bland, you know, uh, chicken and rice or whatever, and you, you have to have ways to mix it up. And I'm lucky to have those guys do it for me. Excellent. Uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? I'm sure Roly is, but who else will be in the cage with you there? Yeah, we're going to have the same ones from last fight. I'll have Roly and then uh, Matt Hamilton, which was my coach since I was an amateur. You know, he's always been there, kind of, he's brought me up. You know, he, he he's really been there, you know, for me when, when a lot of guys weren't. You know, I've had a lot of downfalls in my fight where, People have come and gone, and but he's always been a consistent uh, member of my team, and I'm very thankful to have him, as well as Bill Barton, which is my Muay Thai coach. You know, uh, th- those head kicks I, I racked up in 2019 had a big deal with him and, and the setups that he taught me. So uh, th- it'll be those three. Um, in terms of uh, the fight playing out on August 15th, what's your prediction? How do you see this one going down? Uh, I'm going to knock him down uh, with strikes. That may be a head kick or, or, or this good straight right, but uh, then I'll probably finish him with a sub. He's pretty tough, so I'll probably sub him on the ground once I knock him down. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you, you know, like you mentioned, you were waiting for a fight. You finally got one. You come into this unscathed. I'm sure you want a quick turnaround. Is that sort of the plan, just to keep the momentum going, so to speak? Yes. You know, I talked to my manager. My, my goal for, the, for this year is to, to, to put on a good performance for this fight on being such a big car on UFC 252. And hopefully I can jockey my way on one of those fight island cars at the end of the year they're talking about. Yeah. Get a little frequent flyer miles. Go check out the world. That's one of the benefits of uh, being in the UFC, right? So that's for uh, sure, man. It, it, it's probably one of the biggest things for me. You know, uh, you know, I, I'm little do people know I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. You know, I wasn't supposed to make it this far. I wasn't supposed to be where I'm at. So I'm very thankful that, that, that fighting in general has gave me the opportunity to, to make connections and to travel around the world and, and see places I would have never seen without fighting. And I'm very thankful for that. And, and being in the UFC, you know, there, there's no telling where I could end up next. And that's just very exciting for me. People can't see it on the screen, but you're wearing a Contender Series shirt. We just had the new season uh, come up on Tuesday. Have you been able yeah. to actually enjoy, you know, the, the journey you've been on from winning last year in Contender Series to getting in the UFC and just, you know, being able to, like you said, you weren't supposed to be here, but, I mean, it, it must make you feel pretty good to see where you've come from to where you are now. For sure, man. I, I, that Contender Series is such a great platform for, for up-and-coming fighters. You know, it it really changed my life, and... uh you know, luckily they they had a homegrown fighter series, which was a documentary of, of that that documented my whole process of going through that. And you're right, I did sit down and kind of just enjoyed the moment of, of of how it all went down and the whole process. And man, it it's nice to really sit back and 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 admire your work. And and you're right, I have been able to sit down and watch that and and uh, just watching. I watched uh, week one here last night and. Man, uh, just seeing the faces of the fighters after they fight and they get a contract, I was like, man, I remember that, you know. And we, we get so stressed out with these fights and, and, and so worried about day-to-day things that uh, you, you forget to, to be thankful of the blessing and the opportunity that I have, just like them other fighters had, to, to, to be here and have, and have made it so far. And I think it's good for us to remember and, and be thankful of how far we have come. Gratitude is a very underrated trait to have, and it's so important to put things in perspective because we do get caught up in a lot of this stuff. So right. I like right. definitely like the message there. Uh, before we go, I did notice on your uh, social media you went wakeboarding recently. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you are you into that a lot? Like, because I uh, I live near the beach where I live uh, here in Vancouver, and uh, we used to do it a lot when we were growing up. Yeah, man. I, I just recently got into it. I tried a couple years ago, and uh, I actually was looking through the the back of my house, and I found the one I bought years ago. And me and my son's been out there, and after several falls and, and, and wipeouts, uh, we're, we're starting to master it and uh, go around different places around here in Arkansas and, and, and give it a run, man. But it's just something fun for me and my son to get out and do and uh, it, and get outside, you know, which I love to do. How's the water? Is it warm? That's one of the things. Like, I know sometimes here the water can get a bit cold, but is, is it pretty enjoyable? Or when you fall in, it's like, oh, man, it's pretty cold. 
Yeah, uh, it depends. Uh, it depends where you're at. A lot of places the water is warm now and pretty enjoyable uh, to swim in as well. Uh, but there's a few dam fed rivers that, you know, that come off of the bottom of the lake. So they're freezing cold, you know, so I've made the mistake of jumping in those as well. But most lakes and, and, and uh, rivers around here are pretty warm and enjoyable for, to swim. This is going to be an enjoyable fight coming up here next Saturday. It is a UFC 252. Uh, TJ, always great catching up with you, man. Glad to hear you got a fight booked. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. All right, man. Uh, uh, at, it's at downtown TJ Brown on Instagram. Make sure and follow me. Uh, big shout out to my gym, Westside MMA. I wouldn't be here without you guys. I'm very thankful for all my training partners and coaches that put up with me. And, uh, man, we're going to get a win next Saturday and uh, bring one home to Arkansas. <laughs>